I'm Asude. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Twin Science. Um, very excited. So uh, today I look forward to sharing uh, my journey uh, of how to um, found Twin Science and uh, what is YGA and what's Twin Science. I will share all of these and thanks for this opportunity. So why don't we start? Um, I, I'm really fascinated, and I want to I want to thank our friends uh, for introducing us, Gare Grouse and, and Lee Daly, um, who've both been on the show. Um, could you explain what you mean by the double winged approach to education and how it differs from traditional educational approaches? Yes. Uh... To better um, to to better explain it to you, uh, let me start with a question. Huh? Um, do you know how many people die from natural disasters every year globally on average? Oh boy, I I'm gonna think the number is probably higher than I imagine. And I know you're from Turkey, and I know we had you know thousands thousands of people die just in the last few weeks. Yeah, that's correct. 45,000 uh, people die from natural disasters. And on February 6th, as you said, south part of Turkey was hit by two powerful earthquakes that occurred just nine hours apart. Yeah. And um, the, the, we don't know the number, uh, but it's more than 45,000. Uh, you can uh, maybe you can share some pictures and you can understand the scale uh, of the destruction. We are all touched by by the support from uh, Turkey, from all over the world. However, personally, uh, you can see uh, from these pictures, uh, personally, I must say that I felt angry, helpless, sad. And uh, every time I found myself in despair, I got up with the thought of we should bring heart to science education. This mm -hmm. must be the key for our future. Because these days, we need this approach, this perspective more than ever, as we are facing many global challenges like pandemics, wars, climate change. When you say bring heart, what do you mean by that exactly? So we, um, you know, in the earthquake, for example, 20 million people affected by the earthquake yeah. and the climate change will affect billions. So we should, we should unite, we, we shouldn't wait for the catastrophes or suffering to happen, but we should unite to prevent them. And prevention will be possible by raising generations who are guided in the lights of science and conscience. This is what we mean by double wing. And this is what, uh. this is the understanding of double winged education, the wings of science and conscience. We inspire children to use scientific knowledge to create a positive impact in the people's lives and prevent problems before happening. I learned this philosophy at YGA and it's a nonprofit organization in Turkey. And I met with YGA in university. And for the last 13 years, I've been volunteering for the World Science Moment project. I traveled a lot, conducted science sessions with more than 20,000 children in refugee camps, underprivileged schools and orphanages. And uh, you asked about the traditional education system. So in those workshops, we saw that the traditional education system cut off the wings of children mm -hmm. because it was designed to serve the needs of the industrial revolution. First of all, the, the curriculum is outdated. It's memorization driven, not curiosity driven. It's, so it doesn't uh, make children uh, love science. And also um, that there is not enough play and joy. And secondly, it still ranks children with the same metrics, you know, and it makes children more career oriented individuals who care more about their own future than the future of humanity. So we, we enable them, uh, we want them to have impact, but what kind of impact? We should add the adjective. We, in, we should inspire children to have positive impact in in the life. So one of the things you, you said that getting them to think about the future when they're, you know, instead of thinking right about right now, I have to imagine though, that 
I didn't realize you were, you were doing this work in refugee camps uh, as well. How, what's the trick to getting them to think beyond the here and now when they don't know maybe where a meal is coming from or where they're sleeping tonight? That's a, that's a perfect question. I, um, I think I will give some examples okay. of these double-winged education because and how, how works, how this works in those sessions. And I think this story of the traditional education system, after all this realization in the field, with all that awareness, we wanted to transform education. And this is how Twin was born. You know, um, we designed the science apps and science kits and the curriculum. And um, we named the Twin because we wanted to fill children's hearts with love and minds with science. And um, as you can see from our logo, uh, we wanted to make, we wanted to provide equal opportunities for all children. And I think TV show was the turning point uh, before coming to uh, our sessions on the field because we broadcasted a TV show on CNN Turkish channel wow. and that reached millions of people. And it was the turning point because there were lots of teachers um, who believed in that new educational model and wanted to be ambassadors. So mm -hmm. teachers are so important in that journey and they wanted to be ambassadors and pioneers of these education. And um, I think that the TV show was a turning point and we started to make the sessions and uh, after receiving high demands from parents and teachers, we established Twin as a startup. And so far we have reached including refugees and the orphans and the other children, we reached more than 1,500 schools and 750,000 students in 67 countries. Children who met with double-winged education created solutions to prevent disasters mm. and uh, tackle climate change and started to make responsible decisions. And accord um, we made a research with Ipsos. According to that, their creativity their problem solving skills and selfless confidence were flourishing. And as the more they play with twin tools, the better their academic performance. Mm. So as a summary, uh, humanity cannot fly with one wing. Gargraus also loves this part. Humanity cannot fly with one wing. With only two wings, because it collapsed, with only two wings, we can safely and peacefully build a better future. And it, we can only achieve sustainable development goals with these two wings. And we, it's our sincere wish to work together and collaborate with other partners because we can only grow this movement with the help of partners. So let's, I'm gonna dig into something you said right at the end there with the sustainability development, the sustainable development goals from the United Nations. Tell me how that work fits in with the work that you're doing? Because you don't normally hear about those and education at this level, at least I haven't. So help us understand that. Perfect. Um, what we do is to combine scientific knowledge with sustainable development goals. And we combine STEM with the sustainable development goals. Let me give you an example. Uh, I'm, I can give an example from our content creators. Um, we have a science teacher, Dr. Meryl Bechader, and she is explaining, uh, she is talking about children who don't have electricity in Ethiopia oh. and um, the harmful effects of kerosene lamps that they are using while studying. And she is explaining how to use gravity to uh, help produce electricity with a simple pulley system. And she shows how to make a gravity lamp. And children in this way, first understand the needs of children in Ethiopia, and then they develop some uh, prototypes with twin kits, and then they get motivated because they are part of the solution. This is just one example from our uh, platform and content. So in each content, we co connect and combine STEM topics and experiments with sustainable development goals. These are the goals the goals were agreed by all member states right. by the united nations to to achieve yeah. uh, sustainable to, to achieve uh, for a sustainable world so in this experiment for example 
it was SDG Sustainable Development Goal 10, Reduced Inequality. So in each content, we these connections and with Twinkets, uh, Twinkets allow children build smart games for maybe you can uh, show number three, uh, our visual number three. With, with Twinkets, children create smart games for visually disabled people. These are the photographs, pro, photographs from the field. And you can see here, Twin Science Kids allow children to create smart games for visually disabled people and uh, line following autonomous car to prevent car accidents or um, electric car with renewable energy or other projects and beyond. So they can, they, they build smart farms for their villages. Mm. And they, they first understand how technology works and the science behind it. And then they use their skills for the betterment of humanity. Mm. And it's also very important for, for their well-being, uh, Mark, because if they, um, in the times of change, they can be more resilient. Instead of feeling despair, they, they can take action and they can repair. And we are uh, working with children aged 8 to 12 years old because uh, physicist Michio Kaku also drew attention to the age of 10. Because at that age, children discover the lives besides their parents and their curiosity begins. And it ends around the age of 16. So it's necessary to inspire them between two ages and nurture their scientific curiosity. I was, also, gonna, I was gonna ask you what the ideal age was. And, and I appreciate that you, you gave us a scientific answer to that, like what with these kids. So uh, a, a related question about age, have you, and, and I don't, I don't know the answer. Which is, um, in these refugee camps and and in these these children who have been profoundly impacted by some circumstance, does that how how what's the impact on learning that we might not really understand? Help us understand that. Um, so maybe if we we can take a step back first and. Um, we can have a big picture because we are talking about disadvantaged kids, right? Yes. Um, so there are 222 million children who are out of school and are affected by the crisis, conflicts, wars, and natural disasters. The number is huge, two thirds of the US population. And unfortunately, mm, girls who suffer the most, they are 35% more likely to, uh, to be out of school than their male peers. So children shouldn't have to wait for wars to end or the effects of natural disasters to lessen, to, to learn and thrive. So the impact, uh, what YG is doing, YG is bringing the latest science kits to most, under, most, most disadvantaged children. It's important to provide tools to disadvantaged children because they are the ones who experience these problems so they will be the ones who will solve them mm. because you know the most innovative the most creative and effective solutions come from people who experience that problem right. i can give you an example from history alexander graham bell so uh, i don't know if you know his uh, story but in his childhood, he was very skillful and good with mechanical tools. And later in his life, he met, uh, he, he married a woman, Mabel, and she was deaf. And as far as I know, his father was also working, with the deaf, uh, working at the deaf school. And he invented phone while working for the deaf people to communicate more easily. Mm. I think it's a perfect example. To, to show how helping others elevate the scientific progress. Alexander Graham Bell experienced that problem, wanted to solve that problem, and he contributed to scientific progress. So the impact is in here, I think. It's not just for the helping disadvantaged children going there and helping. It's not about that. It's to provide them tools because they are the ones who experience these problems. I think this, this part is very important. So 
that got me to thinking, um, cause we've had a lot of entrepreneurs on the show and I've been an entrepreneur, uh, I think since birth, um, there's something in the entrepreneur who has a problem, solves a problem and then says, let me go find other people who have that problem and I will solve that for them, which is what you explained. So I'm curious, do you have ways of identifying of these thousands and thousands of children that you work with, which ones have that potential for that entrepreneurial spirit to be the ones who are actually going to lead their peers out of this there you because it's not everybody not everybody does that by right? having an awareness yes but being able to lead and and start you know as soon as maybe 16 17 18 years old that's correct it's been like um 13 years that i'm on the field and working with children and it's been five years that we built our company and we are still following that children and uh, thanks oh. to our software program and our like reports and tools, we can track their uh, progress. I understand you have some Turkish philosophy to share with us. Yes, uh, <laughs> thanks for reminding this. Um, as we finish our conversation, I would like to introduce Turkish philosopher uh, Yunus Emre, uh, who means the dolphin uh, in English, the dolphin. And he, he lived in 13th century um, in Turkey, and he is as famous as Shakespeare and Hemingway to us. He is humanitarian and also our inspiration uh, from the beginning of this project. And what he says, I didn't come here to field and fight. I came here for love and delight. Ah. So as I said, with this understanding and with this considerateness, we can build a better future all together. Asuda, thank you so much for joining us at TEDx Santa Barbara.